Hello friends, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Today is September 11, 2021. I want to talk about heavily shorted stocks and how to trade them. So with that, let's get started here. I got a list of stocks here which are very heavily shorted. Top of the list we got VIH, $10 stock. As you can see here, it's got a very high short ratio, 45%. So then we got uh, support.com. This had a very big, huge short squeeze a while ago. Now it's trying to come down a little bit, as you can see here. And still insiders are, and institutions are buying a little bit. And RSI right now is 64. I will let this cool off a little bit and then buy. And then we got workhorse. Uh, everybody knows workhorse. It's a electric vehicle play. Uh, $8.74 stock here and as you can see here we got insiders and institutions selling a little bit and it's got low sales uh, $3 million and as you can scan through here high short ratio and it's not done much for the year negative 63% performance in one year and then you got big five sporting goods um, again as you can scan through here um, RSI is a little high for me. I would pass on this a little bit. Um, scan through here. We got Blink. Blink right now. It's um, institutions are buying Blink right now. And also nice uh, sales uh, growth uh, quarter over quarter and nice gross margin. And RSI 46 tells you Blink is uh, still oversold at this level. Good to start a small entry here. And then we got here Smile Direct. As you can see here, very low price, $5.15. And as you scan through here, you know, this also has got um, RSI, which is uh, very low, 43. I think it's a good one to buy at these levels. And then we got here Go EV or Canoe, again, electric vehicle play, uh, $6.86 uh, stock here. As you can scan through here, institutions are buying Go EV. And we got uh, RSI very low here. I would uh, buy, you know, um, go EV at these levels. And you might wonder why I'm, uh, you know, uh, highlighting few columns here, like insider institutions and sales growth and gross margin and short ratio. The reason is typically when you want to buy a heavily short stock, Look for either the insiders buying heavily in case of ESPR or institutions buying heavily. Check big uh, five sporting goods as well as the Blink and Go EV. You know, those are the you know, strong candidates that you should consider to begin with. And then look at the sales growth uh, quarter over quarter and gross margin. You know, we call it rule of 40. If quarter over quarter sales growth plus gross margin greater than 40, those uh, rows are highlighted in, highlighted in green. Those are typically good candidates from a fundamental perspective. Um, here with the workhorse, it's a low sales, so numbers are a little exaggerated, but generally that's a good, good way to look at rule of 40. Um, and then we got, uh, you know, as you scan through here, we got workhorse, fundamentally strong here, even the low sales. And then you got here, um, smile direct. I think sales growth and gross margin perspective is good, but I think these guys have got a little bit heavy leverage on the balance sheet, heavy debt. And then finally, we got RSI. RSI is very good to identify when to, when to initiate a buy. Anytime RSI is uh, below 50 or 55, you can buy stock, you know, given it's, uh, you know, showing some positive sign. For example, Workhorse, Blink, uh, ESPR, uh, Smile Direct, and even Go EV, all of them have got RSI below 50. I think those are good candidates to start initiating a buy position. Then you got off obviously short uh, ratio here. Right now it's a short float, starting with the highest on the top and decreasing order. I think we should look at short ratios. That could be very good catalyst. And then last, last but not least, also check through the performance in one year. Typically, it's uh, if, if the performance is always negative, then you got to wonder, will this stock come up any time? 
But if there is some positive in the performance, whether it's one year, five years, six months, then you know this stock can bounce back. It's not always one way trip downwards. So it's always good to look at you know one year performance. I would also look at six months and five years to see if the stock has got some life in it versus always going down. So with that, those are a few things I look at. Now what we'll do is we'll jump into uh, news, headline news on the shortest stocks and then go into a little more detail. With that, let's uh, go get ahead. So from a stock news perspective, uh, from a Wall Street bets trend perspective, we got Hope, Wish, Well, Clover, GameStop, AMC and Best. You know, these are all heavily trending stocks within uh, Wall Street bets. Um, we should take a look at some of these and see if it still makes sense. And then we got your eight Reddit stocks trending in September. We got Clover, GameStop, Alibaba, DocuSign, SoFi, Apple and Tesla. As you all know, I think Apple had a little bit negative news on Friday with the you know, court ruling um, all these app developers can, you know, get the payment from um, customers through some other channel, not only through Apple App Store. I think that's a good news for app developers, a little bit bad news for Apple. I think DocuSign also stock came down big time. Alibaba stock also dropped a little bit. That's why these stocks are trending on Reddit. And then you got support.com here. Looks like uh, support.com wants to get into Bitcoin mining a little bit. So that's why it looks like stock fell down here 16%. If the stock falls down a little more, I would uh, start initiating a buy position with, with support.com here. And then you got here three EV stocks that are down more than 40%. Workhorse, Lost Down Motors, Canoe. You know, at these, these levels, I started liking some of these EV stocks here. We should slowly look at these stocks. They're completely oversold. I think they might show some signs as we go forward. And then we got your growth stocks, including big five sport, sporting goods that funds are buying. I think we should look at this one too and see if we can buy it along with these funds. And then we got strong buys uh, flirting with the bottom got ESPR, Tree, and, and Pace. And then you got your Petco. Petco encourages uh, pet parents to consider their pet's mental health. I think it's very important to consider pet's mental health, especially because, uh, you know, a little bit uh, uh, with the COVID-19, pets are also taking a toll on their mental health. And then you got your right blockchain. This stock has been uh, down off late. We should look and see if it's worth buying right blockchain at these levels. And we've got Beyond Meat here, a positive news. Looks like McDonald is uh, uh, interested in at least uh, offering plant food through this company. I think it's a limited uh, you know, basis to begin with. They got a three-year agreement. And then we got your three EV stocks here, REE, IDEX, and SOLO. Uh, these are under $10 and they could double. So with that, let's uh, jump in and look at some of the numbers and get started. All right. So be before I go into the numbers from a bigger picture perspective, as you can see here, S&P 500, it's been dropping off late. Uh, if you can see here, I got a one day, one year chart. Uh, last two days, we got, uh, you know, two candles uh, negative here, red candles. And also we got one more red candle here. It tells you right now there is some pressure on this bigger, um, you know, in this index, S&P 500. Right now it broke down 25 day moving average. We got to be careful. It might even, uh, you know, do something like it has done here back in uh, August. It might go below um, 25 day moving average and it might even touch 50 day moving average like it did in July. So that's a very good possibility. Um, I think we should, uh, we should prepare ourselves and don't go into too much margin, have some cash on the sidelines because these are the good opportunities for us to invest in quality, quality stocks 
and then you know wait for a good bounce back um, nasdaq same story as you can see here we got three uh, candles negative here three negative candles and it's also trying to touch 25 day moving average and as you can uh, look through here nasdaq is a little bit stronger of the candidates it touched 25 day moving average back in uh, july and also in uh, august i'm sure it will touch 25 day moving average or even come down a little below 25 day moving average <clears throat> like it did in uh, um, july and august and then we got here diamonds uh, it's a dow jones industrials 30 stocks this one actually took it took it a little bit harder so it broke down uh, 50 day moving average it's heading towards its 100 day moving average so i think there's a chance uh, you know this uh, might hit 100 day moving average around uh, 344 or so and then it might bounce back um, as you can see here right now we are in a negative pattern uh, with the dow jones industrial average and even volume every volume on the balance volume is also going down and then finally we got russell 2000 which is a uh, you know small cap uh, indies and this also as you can see here trying to bounce into um, 100 day moving average um, and it, you know this one is a very um, you know very active uh, very volatile i would say it you know, it came down pretty hard back in 719 and also it came down pretty hard in um, august try to hit 200 day moving average i think this might do something similar here also so this might also come down a little bit at least uh, go around say 215 or so uh, try to hit a 200 day moving average then it might bounce back um, so I think that's what's going on right now. And even if you look through um, the in, the uh, ES, which is uh, S&P 500 future, you could see some negativeness in the December contract that tells you there is a little bearishness coming here. You know, be prepared and uh, trade safely. So with that, uh, let's look at heavily shorted stocks here. Um, here, this list has got very heavily shorted stocks. As you can scan through here, stock on the top has got very high short ratio, 45%. That's VIH. And from there, it's in the descending order. And as you scan through here, I got here inside and, and institution sales. You know, pay very close attention here. Anytime you see positive, it's a good sign. For example, big, big five sporting goods. There is a positive institution buying. That's a good sign. And if you look at ESPR, looks like insiders are buying ESPR. That's a great sign. And look through. We got a couple more here with institutions buying. And oxygen, huge insider buying here, 124%. That's a very good sign. So, if, you know, in a nutshell, pay attention to how what insiders are doing. Insiders buying or institutions buying is always a good sign. And then I got here sales, you know, sales, if it's a low sales, I put in red here, for example, VIH, zero sales, workhorse, just $3 million. That's why these are highlighted in red. You know, you got to watch out a little carefully here and go from there. And then we got sales, you know, I love sales growth here, you know, one year, quarter over quarter and gross margin. Um, and also typically look, look for rule of 40, where quarter over quarter sales growth plus gross margin greater than 40. Some of those uh, candidates are highlighted in um, in a, a green background here. For example, Workhorse, Smile Direct, um, Clovius, you know, they all satisfy rule of 40. That's why they're highlighted in green background here. And then we got your um, um, net margin tells if the company is making money. End of the day, some companies have got positive net margin. You know, for example, Workhorse and um, Fizz, which is National Beverage, and uh, Romeo. And you know, don't worry too much about some where we have some uh, pound sign here. These are you know very absurd high numbers. We don't need to worry too much about them. Um, we can ignore for all practical purposes. And then you got debt to equity tells you if the company is taking too much leverage from a financial perspective. So stocks like Best, um, and as you scan through here, 
you got uh, IVC, little higher debt ratio, and even uh, Go EV, uh, uh, sorry, Geo. So keep your watch uh, because we don't want companies to take too much, um, um, you know, um, f uh, leverage on their balance sheet. We should look at that a little carefully. Then we got RSI. RSI, look for RSI below 55. So I've highlighted high, little higher RSI in red. So I would not initiate a buy position at, uh, you know, for those stocks here. Instead, look for low RSI, like Workhorse here, and like um, uh, even, um, you know, Blink. And uh, you, you got your S Smile Direct and so on and so forth. So low RSI is always good coupled with the you know nice sales growth and some um, momentum in the stock and then we got your short ratio uh, by the way if you're an options trader pay attention to the IV percentile uh, this is the IV percentile from thinkorswim a high IV percentile tells you you could uh, make some money selling some premium uh, think about selling put options below stock price you know or even uh, selling uh, call options at a higher price uh, you know higher than the current stock price so you know that's that's why i put here iv percentile when iv percentile is low you could consider buying you know maybe 90 day plus expiration call options uh, you're not paying too much money when the iv percentile is low to buy call options and then we got your um, short ratio very important and then we got performance we got one day performance and all the way to five year performance. This is past performance. So, you know, look for stocks which are, which have some signs, you know, a vitality sign in them. If the stock is always in red uh, in one day, all the way through five year, be a little more careful because um, those stocks, you know, may not show too much um, bounce back. But if a stock is showing some you know, green here and some red, that tells you the stock can bounce back up and down. So those are your candidates, especially when you are doing the you know short squeeze game here. And then look for 52 week high. You know this tells you how much the stock is off of 52 week high. You know, if the stock is off, um, you know at, if the stock is at its 52 week high. Probably you don't want to buy it at the time, but all these stocks you know, got, are very much off from if its 52 week high. So, with that, uh, let's uh, look at some candidates here and get started. All right, so what I've done is I've highlighted a few stocks for you uh, in uh, background color. So, the stocks in background color. Um, uh, green here are good from a fundamental perspective. They got nice uh, quarter over quarter sales growth and gross margin that's greater than 40. And they also have a nice entry position with RSI less than 55. So I would look at stocks like Workhorse here. Stock has been dropping off late. And in five years, there is some green here. And workhorse right now, I think uh, both insiders, institutions, uh, they are selling. But I think it's a it's at an intriguing position right now. I would start initiating a small position here and take it from there. And if even if you're an option person, you could um, buy some long-term call option. Given IV percentile is 26, then I would look at Blink here. Blink, you know, it does not satisfy rule of 40. That's why this is not in green color. But as you can scan through here, um, institutions are buying Blink. That's 40% institutions buying. That's a good sign. And as you scan through here, they got nice sales growth um, and also nice uh, gross margin. I think this one does satisfy rule of 40. And as you scan through here, this does have very high short ratio. And RSI is 46 tells you this stock um, is at a buy position here. But as a scan through here, stock has been negative all along, um, but it's got a nice one year growth here, 362% and also nice five year growth. I would buy some blink here at this level and slowly accumulate. You know, most of these EV stocks are completely sold out. I think it's good to slowly start buying some, uh, some blink here. And then you got ESPR. Um, ESPR is a $11 stock here. And as you can see here, insiders are buying ESPR. You know, that's a very good sign. 
I would look at this ESPR here and given RSI is 33 that tells you stock is completely sold off. So I think you know I would buy some ESPR along with these insiders and take it from there. Um, then we got Smile Direct here. Smile Direct is, is a $5 stock as you can see here. Um, and as you scan through here, it does have nice uh, uh, gross margin here and quarter over quarter sales. Satisfies rule of 40 here. And as you scan through here, a little bit high debt on the balance sheet. Um, RSI is 43, tells you you can still buy the stock at these levels. And stock has been, uh, um, as you can see, here, down all along. This is one of those stocks you got to be a little careful. You're a contrarian here. Stock is down all along. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, this may be okay uh, given, you know, this stock does go up and down sometimes. And then you got a couple more here. Go EV, Ride, Nikola, all EV stocks here. Um, and as you can see here, institutions are warming up, you know, for this EV stocks here. They're buying, you know, buying these EV stocks at these levels here. Low sales, that's why these are in red here. Let's just scan through here. Um, we got RSA levels, all of them low here. You could, um, you could buy at this level, good entry point. And these EV stocks, for most part, they have not shown too much progress here. Exception of uh, Ride here. Ride has got one month positive uh, performance, but all others are low here, negative performance. I would slowly accumulate some position in uh, these stocks here, given these institutions are warming up to EV stocks here. And if you're an options person, you could look at Ride, Ride or Lodge down here, high IV percentile. You could uh, you know sell some premium also if you want to. And then you got your oxygen, oxygen as you can see here, um, we got uh, institutions buying oxygen big time, 124%, that's a good sign here. And RSI is 49, tells you you can still buy, it's oversold here. Um, and as you see here, high short ratio, and this stock has some life in it, as you can see here, one year, 2000%. This is one of those famous Mimi stocks, can go up anytime. That's why I think it's good to buy some oxygen here and uh, get prepared for any um, any short squeeze type situation. And then you got your IVC and Clovis Oncology. Um, Clovis Oncology, as you can see here, satisfies uh, um, rule of 40 here with the quarter over quarter sales growth plus gross margin greater than 40. Um, and then we got your IVC. IVC also, I think it satisfies rule of 40 um, or not quite, I think. Um, I think it's, this is a good one, as you can see here. Both have got positive institution buying here and high short ratio. And I think IVC has got some one day bounce here. I would slowly initiate a position here and take it from there. And then you got your Romeo, same theme on the electric vehicles. Um, institutions are warming up to Romeo, buying some Romeo here. As you scan through here, it also has got uh, a nice short ratio here. Stock has done nothing, nothing much of late, all negative when it comes to performance. And RSI is uh, 37, tells you you could uh, still buy uh, at these levels. And then you got right blockchain. So right blockchain, I think it's one of those cryptos which has not uh, done well even when crypto went up. So I would slowly initiate a position in right blockchain here along with the institutions. You know, as you can see here, institutions are warming up to right blockchain here. I would buy along with them. And RSI perspective, low RSI 41 and high short ratio. And these are done nicely in one year and five years. And as you can see here, some of the stocks, even though there is a high institution buy, like ATER, I have not highlighted them because as you can see here, stock has done great in the last couple um, you know, weeks and months. So, you know, I've been taking some profit off the table in stocks like ATER, given it's gone up nicely. Instead, you know, focus on these candidates where uh, you know, they have been sold off and RSI is uh, below 55, like the ones I highlighted here. When they pop up, you can take some profit and go on to other stocks which are 
uh, low RSI levels and then you know play the game all along. So with that, let's jump into next chart here. We got a couple more here. I've highlighted a few for you. As an example, um, you can scan through here. We got BBBY, SFT, Beyond Meat. You know, all of these, you know, as you scan through here from a cursory look, look at insider institution buying, look at, we got SFT, um, and look at AI, AEI, high, you know, high insider sales or insider buying as well as high institution buying. So, you know, these type of candidates you should look at RSI levels, it's 56 and there is some improvement in, you know, five day, 10 day and one month. You should look for a little bit, uh, you know, um, pull, pull back in this stock, then you can buy. Right now, RSI is 56, a little bit high for me, but if it dropped a little bit, I would uh, buy some AEI. Then you got Skills, Arcon, Solo, same story. I like this nice institution buy in these stocks here. And RSI levels are also pretty low here. The ones I highlighted here, I would look at those and uh, you know buy some at these levels. Um, and then you got your KPTI, Fastly, one of my favorites, uh, Xella, Poshmark, all you know are good as you scan through here. Many of these have got positive um, institution sale and Fastly looks like insiders are buying slowly. You know, that's a good sign here. And coupled with the low RSI levels, I think that makes it a good candidate here. And also watch out for IV percentile in red. That's where you can start selling some premiums um, and make some money that way. And then you got a couple more here. <clears throat> See, you know, NAOE, CPE, um, and even um, RGS here. As you scan through here, CPE, there's a very high insider buy as well as institution buy. That could be a good one to look at. Stock has been dropping off of late. RSI is 49, <clears throat> it's a petroleum play, you know, and, you know, so we got to be a little bit careful because it's tied to the commodity price, but at this time it looks like it's a good one to buy slowly. So with that, we got uh, one more chart here. I will not go through everything in detail, but you can look through. I've highlighted a few stocks for you like uh, David Buster here, Play. Um, as you can scan through here, Dave and Buster has got nice uh, fundamentals when it comes to quarter over quarter growth and gross margin and also high short ratio. Uh, coupled with the low RSI, that tells you you can initiate a small position here. And we got um, VLDR, Valodyne, I'm, I'm also warming up to this. And we got um, institution buying Valodyne and preparing for an upturn here. I would do the same here. And a couple of other stocks like Marathon, I love Marathon. Even any is a okay stock, you know, we got institutions and buying them. I'm waiting for a little bit drop off in the IV percentile here, I mean RSI levels. If the RSI dropped a little bit, I would be buying uh, any and marath Marathon. I would, I'm watching a little bit here. But, you know, if you look at um, highly on go to Alto, uh, S you know, SABR, I would uh, look at buying them with the low RSI levels, as you can see here. Um, I would uh, look at initiating a small position here. And many of these got a rule of 40 satisfied here with the sales growth quarter over quarter plus gross margin greater than 40. And stocks like GoTo, as you can see here, it's trying to make a comeback here after dropping off so badly with the Chinese uh, online education, you know, being free for K through 12, the stock is showing some sign in the near term. I'm willing to venture a little bit and, uh, you know, see if we can buy a small position and uh, watch and track closely. And then we got your Sirius, Fubo, AC, IC and Candy. You know, many of these stocks, as you can see here, have got nice institution buying here. That's a good sign. And some of them, you know, have got some sales growth, as you can see here. That's also good. Coupled with the high short ratio and low RSI makes ideal candidates to buy slowly. Um, then we got a couple more here. Sun Power, SY, Chewy. As we scan through here, um, they also have low RSI. 
Many of them have got nice uh, sales growth quarter over quarter satisfies rule of 40 in many cases. Um, I would look at those. And we also have got Real Real and PBTS. I think both of them have got high institution buying. That's a very good sign. And um, low RSI. I would buy uh, stocks like Real Real, which is completely sold out, along with Poshmark and Farfetch, and take it from there. Look at PBTS. That is a huge institution buying here. Um, I would uh, look at that one too. Very low dollar stock here. Uh, I would uh, slowly buy some and watch out and see what's going on here. Next, we got uh, next page here. Um, you can look through same methodology. You know, look for any in insider institution buying greens in those columns here, like uh, fuel cell, uh, CDAV, uh, MUIS, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. And even FTFT, future China based fintech play. I think this one has got a high institution buying. I think institutions are really positioning for a nice uptick here. And we got a couple more uh, with Sunwork, um, GN, Allen, and so on and so forth. Also, look where there's a huge insider buying. Those are all good candidates. For example, PROG. Uh, this stock, I think it was about uh, you know, 60, 70 cents a while ago when I initially talked about. Now it's a $1 stock. Even at these levels, RSI is 37, tells you stock is oversold. It may be okay to still buy some PROG at these levels. Both insiders and institutions are buying at these levels. So with that, the stocks I've highlighted here have got a low RSI levels, I mean below 55. And many, many of them have got a, a rule of 40 satisfied, especially ones with the green background. And then you got one more page here, same methodology. Look for insider institution buying greens in those columns here, like, um, you know, H Gen. This stock is completely sold off here. I'm willing to venture a little bit into this stock. All is same story, sold off here. And uh, Sonoma looks like in institutions are buying, good to look at. And we got uh, Lee here, institutions are buying. Sundial, a low 72 cent stock, looks like institutions are warming up at these levels. I think it's good to look at that one too. And American Airlines, same story, institutions are buying slowly. You know, coupled with the low RSI, that could be a nice, uh, you know, nice, nice way to get in here and take it from there. Next, we got a uh, you know, few stocks we'll talk about a little more detail just to make sure, you know, we all know, we are uh, going through some methodology on how to identify. As an example here, we got Workhorse. Workhorse is a technology company, designs, manufactures, builds and sells battery electric vehicles. As you see here, stock has been in the trading range for a while. So when that's happening, watch closely what's happening to on the balance volume. On the balance volume is increasing. You know, that's a good sign. Stock is, stock is in the trading range, but on the balance volume is increasing. That tells you, you know, you know people are buying this and preparing for an uptick here. And as you watch here, we got uh, insiders institutions selling slowly, but we got a, you know, RSI level low, which is 40. That's a good sign. And institutions own a big chunk here. <clears throat> so that's why the moment I see this, it's a positive di divergence. Stock is, you know, coming down or in the trading range, but on the balance volume is rising. That tells you there are more buyers than sellers. That's why I would be buying workhorse at these levels and keep accumulating. And then you got here Blink, same trend. You got stock in the trading range and on the balance volume rising. That's a good sign. I would also buy into this Blink here. You know, Blink, as many of you know, owns, operates, and provides EV charging equipment. With the President Joe Biden's um, infra bill, this can also get, um, you know, um, advantage uh, with uh, these EV charging stations. <clears throat> then you got Go EV here. Go EV is a mobility technology company, as you can see here. This one, as you can see here, we got stock in the trading range for a while, 
um, and on the balance volume is pretty steady at these levels and as you look through here we've got institutional buying go ev you know that's why it's a good one both go ev and blink institutions are buying pretty heavily and there is a high short ratio as you can see um, see here and also the rsa levels are pretty low here below 50 that's why i would be a buyer of um, you know go ev at these levels here and then you got <clears throat> clovis oncology it's a biopharma company um, you know they're into cancer uh, as you can see a stock is kind of dropping off this is a Mimi stock as many of you know on the balance volume is pretty steady here and institutions are buying slowly here um, high RSI um, uh, sorry low RSI 39 stealthy stock is sold off and a high short ratio I would look at Clovis oncology at these levels um, and initiate a small position here Next, we got Ocugen. So, Ocugen is again a clinical stage biopharma company focuses on developing gene therapies to cure bl blindness. That's a great cause. You know, stock has been showing some slow progress, as you can see here. Um, you know, trying to consolidate and probably, you know, try to go a leg up here. And look at the on the balance volume. Pretty steady clip here. Right now, it's pretty nice on the balance volume tells you more folks are buying than selling um, and as you scan through oxygen here huge institution buying here that's why I would buy here along with the institution given the RSA level is still below 50 um, and there is a high short ratio and this has done great for one year 2003 percent so that's the life in the stock here and then you got right blockchain here uh, I like right blockchain at these levels even though crypto went well, um, right blockchain has not participated in the upward momentum. But look at here, we got the on the balance volume pretty steady here. Institution buying heavily. I would buy some right blockchain. This is also a great stock that goes up and down. Stock is life indicated by one year sales growth here and also five year, uh, I mean, stock performance here. Positive stock performance in one year and five years. And then you got Woozy. Uh, they manufacture, market, and sell augmented reality, variable display, uh, and computing devices. So as you can see here, uh, stock is kind of going down. On the balance volume is pretty steady. And there is, a, as you can see here, institutions are buying Woozy. So I would buy along the institutions, low RSI. Um, and as you see here, they are positive from a sales growth perspective, nice gross margin. I would buy some, some of this VUZI stock at this level. Uh, it's a low dollar stock as you can see here. <clears throat> and then we got here BBBY, Bed Bath & Beyond. They, they are retail, retail. They got uh, retail and institution sales. Stock is kind of steady at this time. Came down a little bit. On the balance volume is pretty steady. <clears throat> As you see here, they got um, institutions are buying slowly. That's a good sign and nice gross margin. Uh, I think this also satisfies rule of 40. That's why it's in the uh, green background here. Um, I would look at uh, buying some BBBY at these levels given low RSI um, and um, high short ratio. And if you're an options uh, trader, look at the IV percentile. A high IV percentile tells you could sell some premium, make some money that way. A low RSI, like, I mean, low IV percentile, like right blockchain, Woozy, BBBY, tells you could still some, sell some long-term call options um, 90 days or more outside and make some money that way. So with that, um, you might wonder when do I buy and sell stocks? There are so many stocks. What should I do? So I think, you know, first we got to define, you know, what, what's your methodology? You know, many folks I know, they have some long-term uh, stocks they always own. Uh, think of this as a core position. And they also trade so that with, they can take advantage of market going up and down. So, uh, you know, that's the same methodology I also follow. I got some long-term holdings, great stocks. You know, I kind of keep adding to my position. But I also know 
what are the stocks I will be trading. For example, the short high short ratio, you know, I will, I'm willing to play the trading game on those stocks. As you see here, when the you know as an entry point, when the RSI is below 55 and on the balance volume rising, that tells you start smart money is flowing into the stock, so we could uh, buy some. Um, and from an exit point perspective, when the RSI is greater than 60 and on the balance volume is falling, you know then don't buy. If you already have the stock, uh, you can sell it slowly and take advantage of uh, this high uh, price. You know, typically, you know, buy and sell in stages that uh, serves you very well. You know, we don't need to buy huge amount of stocks at one time. That's always uh, not a great sign. You might get some good profit once in a while, but uh, it, it's uh, not a consistent way to make money. Look for stocks consolidating for a while and showing some sign of bullishness that tells you stock has some life, so you could uh, you could buy. Typically, avoid you know buying when the stock is dropping off big time. Um, you know you can buy a little bit, but not too much. You know for the stocks nearing 52-week high, look for a small pullback, so that way you know you don't buy when it's going high and high. Instead, wait for a small pullback, then you can jump in. And for the stock nearing 52-week low, look for a sign of price increase before buying, so that way. You know, stock is showing some life again, and stocks with a huge drop. Look for some sign of bullishness. You know, sometimes you know by looking at the numbers, if they have a good sales growth, and uh, there is some institution buying, insider buying, you could be a contrarian and buy. You know, take advantage of the huge drop, but don't buy too much. You know, buy a tracking position slowly, keep adding. And you know when there is a high short ratio, that can be a very good catalyst, especially when the stock is sold off. And in those scenarios, look for insiders institution buying that shows a conviction from insiders or institutions. Especially when insiders are buying, that's a very good sign. They know a lot about their own company stock. They're they're thinking it's a very good value. That's why they're buying. I would uh, I would pay more importance to insider buying. Uh, than institution, but you know both are okay to look at. And look for fundamentally good companies uh, with the positive sales growth, gross margin. Um, look for rule of 40, where quarter over quarter sales growth plus gross margin greater than 40. And if there is a biotech stock or a technology stock down big on a bad news, it's okay to buy a little bit. Uh, typically, you'll see a bounce. But um, that's a good way to really trade at times. You know, when it, things are really bad, you know, just buy a little bit. If it goes up, bounces, you could take a profit off the table. Uh, otherwise, wait a little bit. And, you know, for options, buyers and sellers, I got some chi rule for you. You know, all these tables I have, I always, uh, you know, indicate what the RSI or relative strength index and implied volatility percentile or IV percentile. If you're a call buyer, Look for low RSI below 50, low IV below 30. You could uh, you know buy some long-term uh, call options. 90 days are out. I mean, if you want to buy short-term call option, be very careful. Um, you know, it, it you can make money, but you can lose money very easily because um, you know the uh, the time is against you if you're a very short-term, unless you know what you're doing. And if you're a call option seller, look for a high RSI and high IV. A high RSI tells you stock is overbought at these levels. It might come down. A high IV will give you more premium so that way you can make some money. If you're a put option buyer, uh, you want stock to come down. That's why I look for a high RSI, you know, which is stocks which are overbought. And a low implied wall, this will ensure you don't pay too much premium when you buy put option. And if you're a put option seller, um, you know, then look for low RSI. You want stock to go up. You want stock to be oversold. And also high IV because uh, you want to make some money selling put option. So that's a cheat sheet for the option traders. Uh, it served me well. I think you should look at this and see if it can uh, serve you well also. So with that, thank you very much. Happy investing and trading. Please subscribe.